Well, thank you very much. I'm Greg Fisher, uh, founder and CEO of AIM Medical Robotics. We're bringing to market a compact MRI-compatible surgical robot that allows real-time MRI to be used during stereotactic neurosurgery procedures. This overcomes the significant challenges related to inaccuracies and inefficiencies in current procedures, including neurostimulation implants like DBS for Parkinson's, um, targeted uh, gene therapy, cell therapy, and other pharmaceutical injections, as well as ablations for uh, tumors. Uh, and the idea here is that we can use real-time imaging to guarantee that you can compensate for motion that can and does happen during surgical procedures so that you can hit the first uh, target the first time, every time, and guarantee that you hit that target. Um, this can be done while also reducing the time and the cost for the procedures. And this is based on uh, 15 years and about $15 million of NIH-funded research uh, that's been transitioned into the company through uh, tech transfer agreements. So what's the problem? Um, many neurosurgery procedures are based on needle-like instruments that we're trying to place into the brain. Uh, this can again be used for ablation applications, this can be used for putting neurostimulators in there, anywhere that we wanna put these instruments into the brain. But what happens is these procedures actually are based on the fact that, or typically based on the fact that nothing moves relative to the skull. The procedures haven't changed much since the uh, stereotactic frames that are attached to the head that are used uh, from the 50s through today. And even the most uh, complex uh, new surgical robots still have the same fundamental problem that they're based on accuracy relative to the skull rather than based on target tissue anatomy inside the brain. So as patients move, different patient orientations, registration errors, uh, CSF loss, uh, air getting into the brain, swelling, all of these cause these anatomical targets within your brain to move, and that can be the meaning between a successful and an unsuccessful surgical procedure. So AIM's looking to, neuro, uh, to revolutionize neurosurgery by enabling real-time imaging, soft tissue imaging during surgical procedures to guarantee that you actually perform this procedure the way you intend to perform that procedure while at the same time reducing the time it takes to do these procedures, reducing the cost to do these procedures, and reducing the error rates. And one of the issues you'll notice is up to 34% of uh, DBS lead placements for uh, Parkinson's actually have to be removed or revised, about half of those due to uh, misplacements. And because of that, only about 15% of patients these days that are actually really good eligible patients do this due to patient hesitancy. So there's a huge opportunity, not only for new applications and new growth, but to actually capture this uh, portion of the population that really need these procedures, would benefit from these procedures, but are reluctant to do it due to the challenges. So we're combining um, you know, real-time, streamlined workflow of the MRI with a robot where we can adapt that procedure as the procedure is going on. What's out there today? Well, there's robots, but these robots don't operate within the MRI. So these robots really show that you can get increased accuracy, you can get increased precision, but again, they have the same fundamental um, limitation that they're based on cranial anatomy. And using something like a CT doesn't compensate for this error. So stereotactic error, which is often reported for most traditional robots and reported by most surgeons for these placements, really misrepresents the accuracy because those targets aren't in that spot anymore. Um, and then there's systems out there, um, like the clear point that I'm showing here, that in my mind really paved the way for putting MRI-guided procedures into the mainstream, right? There is a clinical need, there is a demand for it, but I think there's a huge opportunity to build upon this and take the advantages of robotics coupled with the advantages of MRI. And by doing this, we can make procedures that can be much faster, much less expensive, uh, and also can scale well to multiple targets. So if you're doing deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's, often they're bilateral, two procedures. Uh, I was recently at the NANS conference, and now they're scaling up to potentially you know, four leads in some cases to hit multiple targets. And sometimes we're also adding additional leads for sensing. So now you're looking at six leads. If you look at something like um, targeted drug delivery, that can be six, eight, sometimes 10 targeted injections. So having a robot that can scale and very effectively do these procedures fast is very, very important. We put together an all-star team. Uh, my co-founder is Dr. Julie Politzis, who has been the uh, president of the NAN Society. She's put together an all-star team of clinical advisors, uh, as well as a really strong team of uh, business advisors that have allowed us to really push this forward and be very, very capital efficient, but get our system to the point that we are able to demonstrate this. We actually had live cadaver studies about a week and a half ago where we did a live demo, fully demonstrated this uh, procedure. Where can this be used? What do we mean by stereotactic neurosurgery interventions, right? So we can use this for brain tumor biopsies. We can do this for thermal ablation, which was actually the focus of about $7 million that uh, we had NIH funding for with uh, Dr. Julie Politzis. We can do intertumor injections, which in my mind 
this idea of targeted drug delivery is really going to be the killer app for this robot as the pharmaceutical companies are dumping billions of dollars into, you know, how can we do gene therapies, cell therapy, viral oncolytics, uh, targeted intertumor injections. All of these need to be put in exactly the right spot, and that's really where the, you know, market is going to go. But in the short term, our immediate uh, market is functional neurosurgery, and this is putting deep brain stimulation leads in and doing this very precisely so we can have guaranteed outcomes. And one, you do it right, and two, you don't leave the operating room until you're sure you've done it right. So what do we mean by um, DBS, right? DBS is effectively brain pacemakers. There's three main companies on the market. All of these companies have doubled down on their tech development, all have new features on this. They all see enormous potential for growth. Um, there's five FDA approved indications so far. Parkinson's is the most common these days. Um, but epilepsy, severe OCD, those numbers dwarf Parkinson's and those are growing tremendously and there's a whole host of other applications on the horizon, some already in clinical trials, some even in off-label uh, regular use. Where else can we do this? So we can do neurostimulation. Um, focal ablation is really key, so we can do interstitial ablation. One of the advantages of doing interstitial ablation through a uh, needle-based instrument is we can also do concurrent biopsy, which is really critical for planning adjunct therapies. Um, we can do steroid EEG placement, which is becoming uh, standard of care. And this is an area, again, where robots are incredibly beneficial because now we can be doing all of these different targets at one time. Um, the drug delivery, and then a research platform too. The last thing you want to do is to do a drug delivery study and add the variable of, hey, we maybe didn't even get it in the right spot in the first place. So it's really important to be using this. And there's a huge population, and this is only going to grow. And as I said, if we can overcome the patient hesitancy, which I think having faster asleep procedures and an MRI with guaranteed outcomes is really going to overcome a lot of that patient hesitancy, these numbers can grow substantially. So where are we at? As I said, we've had a substantial amount of NIH-funded research that's been leveraged into the company. We're currently in our uh, cadaver trials. Um, we're currently in our uh, cadaver trials. We just started a new tranche of these. We're looking to do them over the next few months in a regular cadence with our clinical advisors. We're currently raising our Series A round to put us into a uh, first-in-human trial over at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, we're looking to do that this summer. Uh, beyond that, we're looking to uh, gonna be raising a much larger round toward the end of this year through the uh, commercialization efforts to build up manufacturing, V and V, FDA approval, and we're anticipating an uh, initial launch of the product uh, towards the end of next year. Who's, who's interested in this, right? So if we look at this, um, there's the imaging companies, and we've actually spoken with a number of these imaging companies. One, it's really important for having a very streamlined workflow. In order for this to be successful, we need to have tight integration with the imaging systems. Um, on the surgical navigation side, ultimately we're building surgical navigation platforms where we need to have, to have 3D modeling, we need to bring in real-time imaging, we need to guarantee that we can actually control the robot while visualizing this tissue. Um, and then there's the delivery companies, right? So if we look at the delivery companies, there's neurostimulators, there's several companies doing that. We have tumor ablation, and then I just listed a few examples on the gene therapy, cell therapy side of things. All of these are companies that would be interested in what we're doing for either licensing deals or ultimately acquisition, as well as sales channel partners. And I'm not just throwing up names, the large majority of these we've spoken with, some of them were actually actively in partnerships with these days. We have a revenue model that can come in from capital sales of the robot through annual service as well as consumables. Uh, so while we can still come in substantially uh, less expensive than the uh, other competitors on the market, there's still substantial potential for revenue. And the big value proposition to the hospital is that if we can take this all day a procedure for, let's say, using microelectrode recording for DBS lead placements, it takes six plus hours, drop it to a two or three hour procedure that can be done in the MRI scanner, now you can do two to three procedures a day. So it's not a new reimbursement code, but we can increase uh, throughput substantially as well as having much, much better outcomes. Um, and one thing I wanna point out is, you know, while we're in robotics, we're not competing with all of these soft tissue robots that there's a huge number of folks on the market. This was not a crowded space. There's no clear market leader and there's a huge opportunity. So it's real, we've done cadaver studies. This is an example in the operating room on the right, because as we, uh, as we said, this can work in the MRI, but also in the operating room, it's really important because we can have this flexibility and allow this system to be used in every space. So we can use this robot in the operating room, we can use it in the MRI, and in the MRI, we also get the added benefit of real-time imaging. Um, we've had a previous seed round. We've raised uh, one and a half million dollars in uh, convertible notes towards our A round. We're looking to close out our Series A in the next couple months. We have a substantial amount of uh, IP around this technology, both around the neurosurgery robot, as well as much more broadly around MRI guide intervention. So ultimately, we really see this as a platform play all over the body. Um, and as I said, there's a huge number of applications that where we can use this well beyond uh, deep brain stimulation. 
So uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody. And the one thing I just want to leave as a final point is you know, I have one robot. It can be used in multiple different modalities. Uh, there's a lot of companies that will be interested in this, both for partnering with us for distribution as well as for ultimately acquisition down the road. Uh, there's a substantial market even just for Parkinson's disease alone, let alone all these other key applications. Uh, and we're currently doing our uh, Series A uh, fundraise, ultimately followed by a much larger round toward the end of the year. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.